Yo, what is up? I'm Zach. Welcome back to my channel of Ruby Mythology. Today, bringing you guys another Ruby versus matchup video. So, yesterday, I bring you guys a fight that that actually never happened. The actual show, it's been teasing about it, but it never fucking happened. And that is Ruby Rose versus Cinder Fall. Because the reason why I said that, because we've seen the opening in Volume Two and Three where Ruby and Cinder fought. But it never happened. We see the uh, Ruby and Cinder interacting in Volume 4. They never fought. And we never get to see that again in 6, 7, and 8. And some people say, yes, they have. Yes, yes she has. She fought Cinder in in Volume 8. No, she Ruby fought Cinder along with her team. So it's Team Ruby against Cinder and Neo. So it was four against two. We talk about one v one fight, not in team or a team against Cinder, a team against Neo or something like that. No, one v one fight. No team, no backups, no nothing. And people believe that Cinder is obviously win because she has a full mana. No, hear me out. I'm using Ruby, um, volume, uh, seven and eight. Against Cinder in Volume Two and Three, before she has the Fall Maiden. So basically, before she has the Fall Maiden power. So yeah, and also um, keep this in mind. And I know people say Ruby has fought Cinder in in Volume Two. Yeah, that wasn't even a fight. Cinder was just holding back. Hell, in the manga, it actually stated that Ruby would lose. Against Cinder. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, sorry about that. But yeah, it's actually stated that Ruby in Volume 2 will lose against Cinder. Literally. We're talking about a character who's still in training and one who has more experience. So, of course, Cinder in Volume 2 will win against Volume 2 Ruby. I'm using Ruby Rose from Volume 7 and 8 against Cinder in Volume 2 and 3 before she got the Fall Maiden. So, this is basically how this fight will go. With their aura and semblance and their fighting skill. Ruby has no skill of hand-to-hand -hand combat. She's always invulnerable without it. Whenever she's invulnerable without it, she does, um... She does... Add a little like a headbutt like she did with Mercury, so that counts, I guess. And um, when it comes to her fighting skill with her sight, she does throw a bit of a kick and punch with her sight. She just doesn't do it without it. And she is skillful with a sight because of her training by her uncle in the training academy. And she is the fastest one out of her team. She could keep up. Out of the volume 9 Ow, she kept up against a curious cat in 1v1 fight. She is fast and skillful too. Her sight not only is just well just simple sight, it's also a, a gun, a rifle. And so that's her weapon of choice. It's the sight to transfer to us. Uh, a rifle. And her semblance is evolved. Well, I always call it bird uh flower burst or something like that. I can't remember the name. I always call it like Rose Burst or whatever. So it gives her the speed and whenever she will give her enough. It kind of like teleports but more uh, speed around. And at volume 7 when she split three. Uh, split her seven and three and brought back together or something like that. It was also give her the ability to fly etc. And also she could tell also in volume eight when she grabbed uh Blake, Nora, Weiss, and Penny, like burst through to not be seen that moment. So so basically Ruby could grab and hold more than one people. Like she did with um uh, with Weiss. And then she did again with more people. So, there's that. Plus, she does have Silver Eye ability, but that's not going to be involved with this fight. Because there's no need. So, 
Ruby does have skillful of a little bit of hand-to-hand, -hand, but not a lot, just more of her weapon. Basically, mix of her weapon and her fighting skill into one. And without it, she's basically vulnerable. All she could do is use her stimulus to dodge out of attack as possible, etc. So, there's that. With Cinderfall, she was trained how to fight hand-to-hand. -hand. Well, not hand-to-hand. -hand. Nah, she hasn't been in one hand-to-hand. No, yeah, she has been in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But that was like in volume 6. We get to see that she can fight with hand to hand. And she is skillful as a dual wielding. Because she was trained how to wield dual bladed. And her weapon of choice basically dual wielding sword that could turn to a, a bow and arrow. And her semblance is evolved glass. Well not glass. It's like something like steaming burn that could turn into glass. So, yeah, her similar is all uh, burned to glass or something like that. I can't remember the name. You guys don't want to talk about, like, burning and then using glass, etc. So, yeah, she also could make glass of shards of glass, arrows and glass, basically anything that based of glass, burns anything that touch of her victim, Burns through metal or something like that. Things are similar could do anything like... Like turning glass and explosion, etc. And burns people... As she please. Even though they have their aura. She can still burn you even you have aura. And she's skillful. In her own rights. And... um, Well, I can't say her full main power. That doesn't count because... Because her full main of power will actually give her the ability to create anything from her mind and imagination. But, like I said before, this is Cinder before she has the full main of power. So, this is not going to be counted. And, since Cinder has a lot of year experience and Ruby has a year experience, this would be an interesting fight, close fight. But, um, even though Ruby is been trained with all of her friends, her uncle, etc. and even the Aesops. But it is nowhere close to Cinder. But with volume two to three, Ruby could actually keep, keep can keep up with this version of Cinder. So seven and eight of Ruby against two and three of Cinder, it will be a closer fight. But if I decide to win, it could be either one. It could be Cinder, it could be Ruby. But, in my opinion, I know this is going to be sound like, oh, it's biased, whatever. No, this is basically how I see from each version of the characters of their experience of the characters. Get this in mind. I'm going to repeat this out. I'm using Cinder, Volume 2 and 3, before she has to fall Maiden. And I'm using Ruby, 7-8. So keep that shit in mind. So the fight will be close. Evenly close. But the more. If I had said who has the more skillful. None of them gets the. Um, has. Neither gets the edge of their skillful. And, uh, Cinder gets the edge of hand to hand combat. Ruby gets the edge of her speed. Um, what else? Um. Uh, the weapon of choice, I would say a draw because they both have two weapons in one. So I had to get that at equal edge. Semblance, I had to give this to Cinder. Um, so basically, it will be a close fight. If I just say one, again, it could be either one. But in my personal opinion, I believe that Ruby Rose, Volume 7 and 8 would win against Cinder and in Volume 2 and 3 version of Cinder. It would be close, but if she has a fall main and right after, yeah, Ruby will lose. Even though Cinder didn't fully train how to use her fall main and power yet, she would still win against Ruby, Volume 7 and 8. It would be similar route of Cinder's fight against Pure. It would be similar fight. In general. So. 
like I said, this is like before she has to fall maiden. So Ruby Rose would win against Volume 2 and 3 version of Cinder. That's just my opinion. But anyway, guys, uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you guys agree or disagree? Do you guys believe that Cinder Volume 2 and 3 should have won the fight without the fall maiden? Or you guys agree that Ruby Volume 7 and 8 version would win? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Tell me what you guys think. This is just a discussion. So, again, like, comment, share, subscribe. Links to my other channel, my social media will be down below in the description box. And, um, and I'll see you guys later. Ruby is love. Ruby is life. Keep moving forward. And I'll see you guys later.